Welcome back. It's 647. Let's go for a little walk around billing, shall we? Thanks to our eye cams, you don't have to move one step. Haha, <laughs> I like that. But Yellowstone looking pretty deep right now. I went on a walk yesterday, got kind of close to the Yellowstone, and that water is moving fast. That's high up. Let's go ahead and get started with the news. Our top story this morning. President Trump is raising doubts about the timing of his historic summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Speaking from the Oval Office Tuesday, the president said there's a substantial chance the meeting won't work out or maybe postpone. The historic summit focusing on denuclearization is set to take place June 12th in Singapore. Turning to Crime Watch, a teenage suspect is in custody after he allegedly shot his mom's ex-boyfriend in the neck. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John tells us the shooting happened around 1.30 Tuesday afternoon inside an apartment at 801 South 28th Street. The teenager allegedly fired two rounds, striking the victim once. Authorities say the victim was talking to police on scene before being transported to the hospital. So far, there's no word on what led up to the shooting. The future of a former Billings Clinic nurse sits in the hands of a judge after admitting he stole painkillers from patients. 33-year-old Donald Mills pleaded guilty in U.S. District Court in Billings to two felonies related to, to the drug theft. Mills was fired from the hospital last year after he admitted stealing fentanyl from up to 300 patients. The powerful painkiller is highly addictive and even lethal in small doses. Mills replaced the empty vials of fentanyl with saline. He told investigators he was trying to treat his neck and back pain. Mills, who now lives in Wyoming, was allowed to remain free until sentencing. He told the judge he's undergoing treatment for addiction. Mills faces a maximum of 14 years in prison, and there's no plea agreement in this case. A Billings area man has been identified as a victim who died in a boating accident on the Smith River. The body of 44-year-old Chad Newbrest was recovered near the Eden Bridge Monday afternoon. Newbrest was among three men floating the Smith in two boats on Monday. One of the boats capsized after it hit a rock, tossing two men into the swollen river. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office says Newbrest was pinned underneath the boat. The other man was able to make it to shore. Authorities say neither men were wearing life vests. Now we go to the western side of the state where a plane crash landed onto I-90 near Lookout Pass. The pilot walked away with minor injuries. Witnesses say the small plane glided down onto the interstate after the engine quit due to a downdraft. It landed onto the eastbound lanes, temporarily blocking them. We're told the plane was experimental with one person, the pilot on board. Debris was scattered across, this, uh, across the interstate. Besides oil spills, there was not a lot of damage to the roadway. A new streamlined community care program for American veterans is poised to pass the U.S. Senate. It would scrap the Veterans Choice Program in favor of a community care program that allows veterans and their doctors to choose where a veteran's care can be best addressed. Veterans Committee Chair Johnny Isaacson of Georgia and Ranking Democrat John Tester highlighted the key points of the legislation on the Senate floor Tuesday as the debate got underway. The bill also creates new standards for faster reimbursement for private providers and takes aim at several problems plaguing the VA, such as ongoing workforce shortages. In addition, the bill addresses the opioid crisis, establishing stronger safety measures and guidelines for private providers who prescribe opioids to veterans. The bill now has the support of 38 military and veterans groups, as well as President Trump, who has tweeted that he plans to sign it into law. On the campaign trail, we're now less than two weeks away from Montana's primary election on June 5th. Yellowstone County Elections Administrator Brett Rutherford tells Q2 as of Tuesday, more than 18,000 voters have already submitted their ballot. Rutherford expects as many as 36,000 ballots returned by Election Day. Absentee ballots were mailed out to 66,000 county residents on May 11th. This year's primary is highlighted by key races for the U.S. Senate and U.S. House. There are also two district court judge races races on the ballot, as well as a few contested state legislative races. Meanwhile, another outside group is making significant ad buys in Montana's Republican Senate primary. The ads support state auditor Matt Rosendale and attack one of his opponents, former state district judge Russ Fagg of Billings. Russ Fagg, he's tough on victims. 
Club for Growth Action has spent nearly $1.2 million on both TV and digital ads across the state this month. Those ads are both for Rosendale and against FAG. The latest ad says FAG took 45 years off the maximum sentence for a man who beat his wife in 2013. In a news release this week, FAG calls the ad false and misleading. The campaign also released a statement from Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido saying the five-year sentence imposed by FAG was the recommendation of prosecutors. In other news, a change in local cable business could potentially displace 70 Billings employees. Charter Communications will eliminate its video repair call service at its Billings Center. These 70 Spectrum workers were notified Tuesday and will be offered new jobs in the Billings Call and Sales Center on Monad Road. A company spokesman tells Q2 News in an email that the company is also preparing for some to leave. Charter has about 400 employees in the area. It's unclear how this latest move will affect the company's total employment in Billings. Elsewhere, a new pizza restaurant will soon set up shop on the Magic City's West End. Rimrock Mall marketing manager Darren Olson confirms Blaze Pizza will move into the Paris Nails and Spa location next to Starbucks on 24th Street West. The restaurant, which has some 250 locations across the nation, offers build-your-own pizza with fresh-made dough and local ingredients. Olson says this will be the first Blaze Pizza location in Montana. Ed, I think Billings has a great pizza scene. If there's such a thing as a pizza scene, we have a strong one. That's for sure.